Hello, I'm Jinx, and welcome back to Anyland. Here's a video where I'm going to show off my technique for creating caves. And I've done this a lot, so much that I got tired of it, actually, in creating the underground over the course of almost three months. And I wanted to show it off and kind of give everyone a kind of feel for making something organic that was really easy and doesn't take a lot of part count number going on. So let's take a little uh, journey to where I'm going to build a a new cave for this tutorial. So here we are. And back to me. Now, one of the reasons that we can do this cave. Oh, don't look. Haha. <laughs> one of the reasons for making this video for these caves. These caves are easy, they really are one main part that we do over and over and over. Let me make sure that's off. And in so doing, keeping the same color, Anyland basically only thinks of it as one part. And so you, you can make a huge cave of a hundred something parts, winding and whatnot, and Anyland will only think of it as one or two parts total. So Jinx Mansion, here we are, underground cave area. And that is something I haven't, under construction, I haven't done anything with this in a very long time. Very, very, very long time. So, <laughs> let me give you a view into the world. One of the things that I do, and I might need a building light, yeah, to give off a glow. When we're here, change things, we're good. I use, let's see, the underground. This is my template. So I use a square block for the floors now. Because if you see in this room, maybe not so much, but if I grab this light, we'll run up real quick. And here, you can see this red floor. And what hopefully won't happen is the hitbox on this being stretched out kind of gets weird sometimes. And occasionally, occasionally, you might end up through the floor when you try to teleport. You can even see, you can't see the ball at the end of my teleport beam here because it's technically going in to there. Using a plain floor, I'll show this off too. It's a new teleport method while I'm here. Now you can see where you're going to end up when you teleport, so no more blind teleporting. Anyway, by using a plain floor for the, a plain rectangle, that's what I'm trying to say, for the floor itself, you end up with a much better hitbox and no risk of falling through the floor. Now I like using this kind of gray, and you'll see, just for the floor I use a texture. You don't have to, but it's kind of nice. I don't use it on the new walls, and well, you'll see. So, snap, snap. I'm just gonna stretch this a bit, probably overkill, but overkill is okay. Do that. Hey, we're gonna run into a real wall. Do this. It doesn't even need to be thick. I'll stop there. I'm inside it, obviously, it doesn't matter. I'm just gonna move it here. And now you know if you context laser something while you're in change things, you can actually remotely move it. Yeah. So, to prevent war, the galaxy is on Orion's... Wait a minute, no, no, no. To prevent Z-fighting, you actually want to sink something below its level. That might be a little too much, but if I come up here, it should be just good. No Z-fighting, which is nice, but if you get things perfectly overlaid, you might very well likely to see Z-fighting. Okay, so we have a little floor. This is one part, obviously, whatever. The actual cave, I'm going to create a new thing, not attached to the floor, it's just a preference thing for rearranging easily. I use this shape, it's kind of gnarly sphere, and then I use that, I like the dark gray, I think it works well, any shade of gray. And then a couple things that are nice about this particular shape is on two sides you have it, it kind of gets into the pointy, but on the rest of it it's a lot smoother. So what I do stretch it out. Maybe you see where this is going already. Stretch it out like so. Give it a rotation. Pull it and give it a little thickness. 
look at that. We have a cave wall. I'm going to line it up here. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, roughly-ish, like so. And then copy it. Copy it. Pop it around. Pop it around. Look at what we have here. We're making a cave. Or some sort of organic stone, rocky tunnel. Come around here. Don't want to clip off the edge. Come here. Can even make this a little tighter by giving it some angle. You step back and you see now it's a tunnel and it's meandering a little. There. I often like to, if I'm making ugly seams like that, I'll copy it, squish it, make almost a column out of it, and place it there. Give it a little definition. And we're going to hit done. What you're going to see when I context laser one thing part. But wait, we used one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven of these stones. Why did it only come out as one? Any land likes to treat things of the same color as one part. It merges them down, which is really, really, really nice. Because we have a you know, the radius fifteen hundred thing part limit. And that's this is a beautiful thing. So I go back and edit it, and what I like to do with the ceilings here, I'll take one of these and I'll start doing this. That's where you can get fun, you can get angles. As long as you don't, you know, do that. You get weird ceiling parts. Oop. I'm only so tall, you know. Into here. Line it up. You can get thick. You can pull it out. Make sure things line up better. With this, if you start doing caves a lot and your arm is up a lot and you keep this and this. You're going to get sore shoulders, I promise you. That's one of the reasons I was starting to get tired of doing caves for the underground. Now I see maybe up there there's a hole. One thing I like to do, I'll grab a piece and I'll shape it. And I'll make like a boulder out of it. And then I'll just pop in and fill the hole with a boulder. Again, still only using the one part. I can see there's going to be some... Ah, light! Where am I? Ah, I went through the wall. There. I went too high. Sometimes I'll do... You, know, you get creative with it. Like a boulder kind of sticking out like there. You can see and you start shaping it. Hit done. Context laser it. One part. If you start branching out and you keep it one big cave you'll watch and the part count will become the true number of actual parts. Then all you have to do, if that happens, try always merge parts. That's all. Nice and easy. Now I'm using the parts stretched out and wide because I can cover more area with fewer parts, which takes less time. But I've seen where, for example, a couple people will have, I'll shrink it down. Make it, they make it kind of flat and small, and then they'll stack them, like so. And you get an interesting effect with that. Done. I hit done a lot because I like to save my progress. I've also seen more of the boulder style that some people prefer, where, hmm... Make it interesting right here. Hm, too far. You can see it's ugly on the other side. I double tap that teleport. There. Right, start doing this. This starts to look pretty neat in using a lot of little parts and it starts to look more detailed look at that dude it's almost like a rock slide came in here actually this looks like it would be a nice spot for a little waterfall or lava fall I'll keep that in mind in the future and you see 
why I don't use the flat type because it's too many edges. They blur right in. Context laser, one part. Remember, I did merge all parts. So that's the real quick and dirty on <laughs> caves the way I build them. One other thing, I think. If you were to take this and, sh well, actually, let's just do it from here. If you instead stretch it with the idea of making the gnarly part, the pointy part, to be the face that you're going to see. Let's see with the light, you get a little more detail, a little bit different. Instead of being perfectly smooth, you're going to have a bit more rocky pointy. Kind of cap this off here. Hmm. Okay. Ooh. I like that and keep that in mind actually, making it really tight and squeezy. You have to get through. Let's get that. It's supposed to be underground here in the cave network, so you shouldn't see the sky up there. Right? Hopefully I'm not moving around too fast too much and making you sick to watch. But it's you know, been a couple of months of making a lot of caves, so I'm pretty efficient at it. Done. Okay. Now we have a little alcove. Not bad. Needs detail. I'm going to break out that wall in the future when I get bored and do a bit of a cave network. I have some neat ideas that predate the underground that I wanted to do in here. And a couple of ideas that we actually did in the underground because we were working on it and I come back here other things, and I can do this in a small scale, I think. Yeah, I'll put that. So say, say we're doing this, and then say this is much bigger like the floor is now, and I want to do an angle down. Here's the problem <laughs> with using these pieces. You can see there's a break or ledge if I try to squeeze it in, but I still want it down. You're always going to get some sort of pass through unless you made it perfectly, and that'll drive you crazy trying to get that perfection. So when you have any kind of ledge like that, what I'll do is I'll, again, this shape, and I'll try to make it appropriate for the scale, since now I'm doing it at scale, little scale. Let's pretend that's it. I will make a little ledge out of these parts. When we go into the underground, you'll see I've done this a bunch of times. Grab, grab. It's simply to mask the edge, make... You know, well, sometimes I get fancy with it and sink them down like that. Make it actually look a little more organic. So that this way, we've hidden the seam and it should look good. Otherwise, you're going to see those ledges, and it's going to look very simplistic, like you've used those basic shapes. And one interesting thing that I didn't mention when I make this cave, that I always do when I make caves, I make them unwalkable, because some of these surfaces have some interesting geometry to them, and sometimes you can just manage to get your context laser on something that would allow you normally to jump onto it. And then all of a sudden you're through the wall, or you're through the ceiling like I was doing when I was double tapping to get up here and being careless about my movement. So with the cave, you do that. That way nobody will be able to accidentally jump through and get stuck in a wall. With the seam covers here, you don't do that because you do want them to be able to walk across that. That's just part of it. So here we are. Like I said, the basics of caves. It's interesting, especially if you go back and look in the underground, a couple of times I've not used this gray, and I've used like a more of a brown, orangey brown for dirt, or near the end I used the kind of blue and it looks, it matches the crystals at the end better. But the reason, let me delete this first. Gray is good because it picks up the color of whatever else you might be holding. So. Look at this. I've got this yellowy orange torch, and now the gray has just a slight yellowy orange to it. Just that little tinge. And you look back. Same thing with the blue 
there. And if you go to the, and that one, of course, there. And if you go to the underground, we did a lot with different light colors. But if you don't pre-light, if you don't do anything else, this is a spooky looking cave. If I came across this, I don't think I'd venture into it not knowing, not being able to see past in the dark. If you came across, let's say we were up here and we were coming in from up there. And we come down and, hmm, we've got this. There's something over there that's, there's a light, right? Hmm, that might draw my attention. That looks just straight black, like scary. No definition, and as I approach with a torch, I see, oh, 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 I would not willingly go through there without a lot of light with me, for example. Spotlight. Right? Not bad for a cave, huh? See the, you'll notice the floor texture, not bad, not bad. The ceiling being more organic. People don't look down, I think, is why I do the flat floor, but then I do the more interesting ceiling. I think people have less of a tendency to look down at where they're going or look up to a really, really high ceiling. So that's kind of spooky. And if I turn off snapping for a second, I will pull out a candle we can light this area up. Ooh, this is dark, huh? What color do we like? Green? I like green. Here we are. It's so dark, I can barely see where I'm setting this out. And here's an example of what I mentioned using laser eyes to clear emitted things. So now if we pop back, now we've got a green light just lighting up that one little spot which makes it look even more ominous if you're not holding a torch or something yourself like that come through here and maybe it's a little more inviting because there actually is light and it looks like maybe a human actually placed that anyway just an example of the caves different styles and what you can do with it just making it super simple one part same color keeps the part count very low and it's really when you're making a cave like this you're not adhering to any normalcy, like if you're making a room in a house. Eh, you probably want orthogonal walls, perpendicular to everything, and maybe some angles, and things have to look kind of realistic, believable. With a cave, you could just meander and go and split and come back around and turn around, and it just is almost like a stream of consciousness design, where you just keep going and going and going and do whatever you'd like. And yeah, my last tip, which made it a lot easier and a little bit less boring for me is I put a bunch of floors down first and then build the walls up and then the ceiling. That way I can lay out how I want the path to go and then just build it up, build it up, build it up. So yeah, I hope that this was helpful at some, in some way. Maybe helpful for you. Are you looking at me? And um, yeah, so other than that, Build some caves. Hopefully this inspires some other kind of architectural design, kind of the freeform stuff. And yeah, have a great day.